Amazing. We are apparently from Estonia. Let's hop over there. All right, let's do this. Better be quick here. All right, all right. It's not too good. Do it like that. Goddamn, there's a huge garbage track on them. We better wait for that to go to hop off. Come on. Above. You're kidding me. You just turn it around. <laughs> yeah. Hi there. There's no sense in waiting any longer. Oh, I saw, well, I'm right in the middle of some kind of traffic island here in Bremen. In Bremen. So, Bremen, uh, which was the next station for Anna Elizabeth. Uh, on her way to America. That's uh, what we're going to talk about today. Well, second part of Anna Elizabeth uh, and her way to America. I don't want to talk too much about Anna Elizabeth in specific today. Uh, that's going to be for for next part. But today I'm going to show you I want two things, um, and especially uh, this building behind me, um, which is related to uh, migration from Germany to America. Uh, pretty much is so and there's also tobacco today of course so we're going to talk about some really good tobacco I thought um, I really owe you that just after the, the last video so uh, <laughs> not the last video about uh, Anna Elizabeth but the last video uh, that was about spring tobacco and uh, didn't went so well uh, on the tobacco uh, front so all right, let's do this quick here and hop off to another location so uh, I can talk about the tobacco there. But uh, first, let me let me say one or two words while I'm, while I'm here uh, at this side. And, oh no, I hope you can understand me. Traffic is getting oh no, crazy here. Uh, although we're early up in the morning, here. but yeah, well, this is this is pretty close to our main uh, train station. Main train station. In fact, right behind me, and 50 meters more, there's the central train station. So there's a lot of going on here around this this area. Um, but the building you see behind me, that is some kind of special. Because uh, this building, this it's now a hotel, but uh, in the old days, this building was a specific train station. Uh, for immigrants, for German immigrants to America. So, and we're not talking thousands, we're not talking ten thousand or hundred thousands, we're talking millions, we're talking millions here. So, probably in the second half of the 19th century, something, I don't know, four million, five million people, and 90% of them, during a specific uh, period, 90% of them, took their way to America over Bremen. 
So Bremen was the largest. So Bremen was the largest German harbor, um, and that is one reason. But Bremen was especially the largest harbor for emigrants from Germany, all over Germany, uh, to America. And why was that? So some of the harbors and some of the cities, let's say Hamburg, for example, they didn't want to have these emigrants for a long while. So they rejected uh, to, to do something like shipping emigrants to America. And the reason was they, they didn't want to have all these poor people in town <laughs> waiting for, I don't know, for, waiting for the ship to come or whatever and hanging around and I don't know. So they were suspicious about that. Oh, if we think about Anne Elizabeth and uh, the way she got her ticket, so as a suspected criminal, uh, <laughs> uh, we, we might find some understanding in that, so, uh, and, and the behavior of the, the Hamburg authorities. But on the other hand, well, you know, the Bremen ship owners and and all those 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 guys connected with uh, with the business. They saw a, a business opportunity here, so, and they hoped that they really stepped into that and they really uh, got into that and they made some pretty good offers to uh, those immigrants. So number one, uh, a safe journey and being safe in the city. And that was important for those immigrant uh, families from Germany because they were mainly families with children, sometimes a lot of children. <laughs> I know in the U.S. in the early uh, years, so uh, German families um, were well known for having a lot of children. Um, so, and they were poor people. Uh, they they didn't have uh, much, I don't know, um, uh, much chances or much much opportunities to to protect their families by their own. So. Um, yeah, they pr pretty much depend on, on the city to, to do that for them, to, to make sure uh, there's no thieving going around, no, I don't know, no staring, no murdering, um, I don't know, not having their daughters raped or whatever. So, and that's what they did. And in the early days, when Anna Elizabeth, so Anna Elizabeth came here in uh, 1843, and she came here, probably around this this area right behind me and the building behind me so this the special station for for immigrants that wasn't there at, at that time so that was built uh, later on but there were small like cabins small houses uh, shabby even uh, where all the business was done like getting the, the tickets and, and so on uh, some first information and, and so on that was all done in this area um, right behind on the back side uh, of the train station of the main train station and later on uh, they did that building so I, I wanted to show you that because if you're from the U.S. and you have uh, ancestors or, 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 or no, your family has, has immigrants from Germany, it is pretty likely that they step through this very door here at one point. Because in front of me, it's pretty much where I stand right now, uh, there was the railroad going on. So they stepped into the trains here and they went on to Bremerhaven which will be our next stop on Anna's way to America. So they, from here, they, they went to Bremerhaven uh, to go on the ships. And that's what millions did. So that's the reason why I wanted to show you that building one, one here uh, at, at this place. But on, in Anna's time, this all didn't exist. It was pretty much in the beginning, so the whole thing just got started at that point in, in the early um, uh, 1840s. So, just small shacks and uh, small houses and a bit shabby on the inside. We have old pictures uh, of that that might give you an idea. So, yeah, 
I think we're hopping off here. I think I said all the things I, I want to say. And uh, since we're a harbor city, and I've been in the old uh, days, and I want to want to show you tobacco today, our uh, dock worker. I think we're gonna go for uh, for a proper place, and the proper place uh, would be Oversea Harbor. Oversea Harbor, Übersee Hafen. That's what we call it. Uh, today it's a, a fancy quarter of town because uh, all the shipping overseas that is done by Bremerhaven, which is part of uh, the country of Bremen. Uh, but in the old days, uh, they did a lot of shipping, uh, especially, uh, I don't know, freighter good and so, um, in this part of the town. And we're going to hop, hop off and uh, we're going to go there by bicycle. Uh, there's, there's no chance to, to get there by car. I'll bet there is a chance, but uh, <laughs> that would be pretty odd. All right, so let's hop off. Uh, see you in a bit. Still plenty of room, so if you want to build something, go on. Knock yourself out. All right, guys. I want to be honest with you. It wasn't too easy to find a proper, proper spot here. So, well, it's harbor region. There's a lot going on. I don't know. Too loud. Too much traffic. Too, I don't know. Too many people around. Well, that's an advantage if you if you if you always do your videos in the forest or whatever. What I do a lot. There's nobody around. Well, you know that. All right, I don't want to complain. I want to show you some tobacco. So I'm now pretty much in the center of that what, uh, was called the Oversea Harbor uh, in the old days. Uh, I already thought with some luck uh, we might want to meet some trucks. Uh, so <laughs> with pipe presents curse. So my pipe is still unpacked. Mm. I'll show you tobacco, and perhaps now you get a better understanding why why I picked this specific place. So <laughs> maybe that's silly, but just I don't know. Came to mind, uh, and I thought, yeah, well, let's go there. 
All right, so the tin is still closed. Uh, there's a reason for that, because um, I, I want to I wanna really share the first impression with you. So. Well, unfortunately, I can't really, because uh, you can't smell it. But you see, I'm just opening that and give you a first impression. So, uh, well, it's not my my absolutely first impression, of course, I had, had many tins of this dock worker, and there's good reason for that. But uh, this specific tin, and I first take a whiff, and then I'm gonna gonna tell you what they say about the tobacco. Uh, different than the no I normally do. All right, I opened it up. Pipe away. Yeah. Show you tobacco. So this is beautiful. Look at that. Camera gets this done here and. So, quite different, quite different to the haymaker, and that's a good reason for that. There's no hay note here, so you have these, these dried fruit, these dark bread, no leather, no earth, but very dry fruit. It's a birdie note. I'm gonna, gonna tell you what they say. Let me. I gotta get that from the internet because there's there's no description on the tin, so uh, let me just check. So they say, um, so this dock worker tobacco produce this is done by HU, so it's an HU tobacco, and this tobacco really has written HU all over it. I'll tell you why. It's produced by Dun Tobacco, as so many of these fine HU tobaccos. So they say. A strong, chocolatey and spicy Malawi Burley, Malawi Burley, uh, is at the center of the dock worker uh, flake. It is complemented by spicy Orientals and Virginia from Zambia, India and the Philippines. So we have different uh, Virginias here. The result is a sweet, spicy blend with a beautiful Burley Oriental touch. Uh, this unusual blend impresses with a very complex and well-balanced flavor, a medium-strong flake for friends of a fragrant tobacco. No added, no flavor added. That's that's an important point, because well, you you might think of some flavor if you smoke that, and you might think that you detect that. But well, we ha we have to keep in mind that there is a difference between a flavor that comes from a casein. So a casein that is used during the process of fermentation, uh, so to add some sugar, and you have this very specific, this this very typical malty flavor here, but it's more into the direction of dry fruit, some chocolate notes coming up from the burley. Uh, but well, what am I talking without without smoking on here? Sorry. So. Now we got all the components. We know about the components. I'll tell you about uh, the condition, uh, what the tobacco. So the tobacco, let me show you that. So like some of these really good flakes, so it's, it's a bit into each other. So, so what could be the best method to, uh, to pack that and to, to get that ready for the smoke? Mm, yeah, well, you, you, can, you, can, you can try to get the slices separated but this is very. This would be very hard. So it's, it's very difficult. So what I normally do is, I just I don't know. Just do it like that. Just just grab some of that. And well, you know, there was someone in the YWC, a YWC friend who who reminded me that there are different methods of packing of like, of course. Uh, so he is an absolute beginner. He doesn't know about pipes and tobacco and so on. He he he, uh, uh, he said, well, for him, it's best method to wrap the t tobacco out completely, especially when it comes to tobaccos with burning issues, with issues and stay in lid. And we know there are several uh, flakes are uh, having issues stay in lid. Well, there is a video on the channel about uh, Samuel Gavith and, and many matches. Uh, we did a, a little experiment. If you're interested in that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you can watch out for that. So, all right, if you wrap these tobaccos with issues, as experienced pipe smokers, we know that if you rub it out completely, it will be much easier um, 
to make it burn and to stay lit. So, but that's not a method that so many pipe smokers really prefer. So I do it sometimes, and there's nothing wrong, not nothing wrong about it. But uh, it's a very different um, experience, ex uh, experience if you wrap the tobacco out completely, or if you do a ready wrap, or if you do fold in stuff. And there are not so many um, flakes on the market, or just let's say a high quality flake can easily stand fold in stuff. And that means you just take them off the different slices, you just fold that and, and just let it slide into the bowl and that's it and tobacco stays lit and everything and that's a very different uh, pipe smoking uh, experience than to rub it out completely. So that's the reason why good flakes uh, offer really uh, the opportunity to use one of these methods, whatever you want. So, But, but some flakes with issues, they they better, you better wrap them out completely. This may be a lack of quality, but that's, you can decide that for your own. But for a beginner uh, like, like, like him, it's always good to wrap it out uh, completely, of course. All right, so, I don't wrap it out completely. I just do, because I don't know, I, 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 have a, I don't have my hands free, so I just do a little, a little something here, just do it some kind of ready rub. Uh, otherwise, I couldn't couldn't prepare my pipe here. All right, so tobacco comes. I don't want to say rather dry, but tobacco doesn't have too much humidity. That's always a good sign if it isn't too humid. So we, we know we all know that. So number one, you get enough tobacco for your money, so <laughs> you don't buy too too much water. Uh, but what is more important is that the company really believes in the in the quality of the tobacco. So because we know water and water is often used to to avoid sharpness. Mm, so and there's no issue uh, about sharpness here. I guarantee you. Mm, so we have these these raisin notes, these dry fruit notes in the tin, and <laughs> let's see what the tobacco does when we when we light them up. So let's go with it. Mm. Another thing, so some, some guys uh, sometimes ask me about tampon and so on. And well, well that's not a beginner's channel, but um, I'm gonna tell you anyway, because well, we all know that if you're on a smoke, pipe smoking contest or championship or whatever, so um, you got two matches, and there's a reason for that. So, number one, you light it up with the first match, and then you tamp it, and then you go for the second uh, match. The reason is if you light it up uh, and you don't tamp, tobacco uh, likes to grow and then uh, it can't, I can't really go for the oxygen. So you have to put it down a little bit, don't do too much and that's it. So, but you all know that, you all know that. Mm, all right. Mm. Yeah. You have these very typical burly notes. Mm. You can even taste the Oriental. It combined with these Virginias. But more than everything, this is about dried fruits. It's a sweet tobacco. It is full bodied. Mm. Has a nice body, a nice aroma. But but you but you have to like these these dry fruit, <clears throat> these dry fruit multi-direction. This is this is not about I don't know. Fruity in a way of orange or something. Uh, <laughs> Some guys say it's a, a floral note. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe that's combined to the Oriental, perhaps, or some parts of the Virginia. I don't know. But I'm not so sure about that floral note. But certainly for me, at least, n there's no citrus note. 
are coming from the Virginia, but it's all about chocolate. And that's the direction. But it's a natural taste of chocolate. So, mmm. Tobacco burns pretty well. You can do folding stuff uh, like you can do with every really good, uh, good flake tobacco. Uh, there's, there's no issue with all that. Uh, Stay lit easily. You can you you can just smoke that down, but focus on that. Mm. It doesn't give you any tongue bite, no sharpness. So dock worker, uh, as I said, dock worker is one of the. It's, 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 I think it's one of the best sellers mm, when it comes to HU tobacco. I think so. I don't, I don't really have the numbers uh, by the company, but mm. in Germany at least they talk a lot about dock worker. Well, some kind of sister tobacco to Haymaker, but very different. So Haymaker, this Virginia-based tobacco, and really provides some some good some good hay countryside and pure Virginia straight down the middle notes, and and here you have these these chocolate. And there's a bit more body, a bit more more of everything combined with these oriental notes, Virginia from the back. Yeah. If you're really up for, for something like that, so for a natural burley based uh, tobacco, mm, it could be something for you, of course. I think it's recommended. But it's hard for me, you know. I, I like to complain, so uh, <laughs> what is better, better than that? I don't know. The wind shear is just just fix the camera. I don't know. Mm. So, but here, there's much to complain. Perhaps we could complain about the price. I have no idea. So let me let me take a look. Oh, really not. Nine euros eighty cent. Nine euros eighty cent. So, some month ago, I did a video about uh, one of these Germain tobaccos, a really fine tobacco. But on the other hand, um, it is really good tobacco. The, the, uh, the Germain tobacco I was talking about, but but this one, same league, same quality, and it's available. Um, and, it, and the price is it's more than fair, I think. Nine euros, 80 cents for, for a really high class, high class flake tobacco with so many different components. So, all right, I think it's recommended. Not much else to say. So this is really, uh, that's really here in the heart of the old harbor where all the dock workers have been and now they're, I don't know, young folks hanging around a lot and watching me. What's this crazy old guy doing there? Is he on YouTube? <laughs> I don't know. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. So. Mm. I want you to show you uh, the first, the first side, and uh, well, some some places here ar around the Weser, uh and that's that's pretty much same, um, same. So center of town is pretty much same uh, as it was when Anna, Anna Elizabeth came here, and she probably just stayed for uh, I don't know as short as possible, perhaps just a night um, or two nights. Uh, before the ship, the Alvina was ready, and before she she could hop off. So, all right, um, we're going to talk about that uh, in the next video because that was the second step for Anna Elizabeth coming to Bremen uh, with her ticket and getting her ticket, and the next step would be go to Bremerhaven, where the open sea is, uh, where the visitor goes from Bremen to Bremerhaven, and then there is the open sea. And, and that's really the port uh, then to America. And we're going to find out uh, what, what 
what the conditions or what the circumstances uh, these immigrants from Germany had uh, when they wanted to go to America. Because there's a museum for uh, for immigrants, and uh, we're going to see if we if we find find out something there. And um, yeah, that's it. Pretty much it for today. And I hope you all are doing well. Mm, hope you have something good to shoot you on. So if not, and you get the chance, get yourself some dock worker. Alright, do this another time. I can't resist. Uh. <laughs> Alright. Hope you all are doing well and take care and perhaps see you again. <laughs>